So before we start discussing data structures and algorithms, we should start to discuss a little bit about what a data structure and what an algorithm really is. So to help to answer that question, I've written out some sample code here. We'll walk through both of these concepts in some detail in this video. First off, what is a data structure? As the name implies, a data structure is really just a way to store and organize data. When we talk about data, we're usually talking about multiple points of data. You know, like when we have a single point of data, we can just set it into a variable very easily, like i equals zero, found equals false, right? These are simple sort of examples. We don't really find these too interesting. But if we have multiple pieces of data, say like this uh, list here, then we need to start to think about how we're going to store this list of data. And our goal with data structures is really to be able to access and modify data as efficiently as possible. Usually that means as quickly as possible. So one possible way that we could store data is inside of an array or list like I have here. Maybe this solution works well for a particular problem. Maybe there's a better way to store our data so that the retrieval is more efficient. And that's really what we look at when we talk about data structures. What sort of data structures exist and in what ways should we use them? And what is the best fit for our data structures uh, for their different use cases, right? So that's the idea of data structures. An algorithm is a way of solving a problem. More specifically, it's a well-defined set of steps for solving a problem. Usually in computer science, what a problem is gonna be is it's gonna be taking some sort of input, doing something with it, and then turning it into a desired output. For this example here, I have the idea of what's called a linear search. So we can write out this problem really in terms of input and output, and that's something that we'll do fairly frequently. So for this, the input is going to be a list of values and a value to search for. And my desired output in this case, what I want to see out from this is the index of the value we are searching for in the list or negative one if the value is not in the list, right? So that's a way that we could define our input and output for this problem. And what I've done is I've written out this algorithm, this sequence of steps in order to solve this problem. So for any given input, any list of values and a value to search for, this algorithm will find the value we're searching for or return negative one if the value is not found in the list. Now, what's interesting about this is really two main things. The first thing is that I told you that this is going to solve this problem, right? I said for any sort of input, it's going to give us the desired output. But you don't know if that's actually true, right? You could read my code and understand it, right? But it would really be helpful to have a way to prove that that actually is true, that this does work for any given input or output. So that's the first thing that we'll explore when we talk about algorithms, is how can we actually prove that our algorithms are correct? The second thing that we'll talk about with algorithms is how can we determine if an algorithm is efficient? That being typically, how long does it take for my algorithm to run, right? And even more specifically, typically we're looking at as an input size increases, how does the time react in our algorithm? Does the time also increase? Does it stay standard or constant? Uh, you know, what factor does it increase by? These kind of questions are very important. The reason why these questions are important is because although our computers continue to grow stronger and stronger, right, we have more and more powerful computers that can process all sorts of different things, our data sets are actually growing proportionally large, right? We have massive data sets now. So as these data sets grow really, really large, the need to process them quickly is still important, right? Even though our computers are very powerful now, we still need to be able to process data sets that are very large. So proportionally, we still need to care about how long our algorithms actually take to execute. So the goal by the end of this class is that you're going to understand a variety of different data structures that you can use with algorithms in order to solve problems quickly. I'm going to show you a lot of different techniques for algorithms, a lot of different data structures, and if we're going to combine them all together. We're going to solve a whole lot of different problems. We're going to see a whole lot of different ideas in algorithms. By the end of this, you're going to be a pro with algorithms and data structures. So that gives you the basics, the introduction. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.